So Antonio, thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with me here at Fuse. We had some really interesting keynote presentations this morning. Uh, I think one of the big takeaways for me, if you think just of Vodafone's announcement, tendering 170,000 sites, 30% open ran, so 50,000 sites out there that'll go uh, open in the next few years. What do you make of this? What does this mean for sort of the acceleration of the technology into the market? So Shane, thank you very much for uh invited me for this conversation. Uh, I agree that this morning was a very exciting news uh, coming from the market. Very good introduction for FIUS and particularly the presentation for Vodafone in UK uh, announcing Open Run. And the previous two presenters also uh, uh, mentioning about the traditional vendors also moving into the right direction of Open Run. Basically that proof uh, the industry is right uh, that 5G needs uh, open architectures, needs open run, and 6G will be uh, required uh, to, to have this open architecture also. So I think moving into that direction is uh, the industry was needing it, uh, the operators were putting a lot of pressure to actually make it happen. And finally, traditional vendors are announcing that they are also moving into that direction. So it's very good for all of us. Yeah, and uh, opportunities notwithstanding, there still are some challenges. And I think one of the, the themes here of the program is just the ongoing ecosystem development that OpenRAN requires to succeed. So maybe tell me a little bit more about how you see incumbent vendors embracing OpenRAN as lifting everybody. Yeah, I, I think, uh, they have been also putting some roadblocks uh, to up and run. I mean, traditionally, over the last 20 plus years, uh, they have been developing functionality features that now they are trying to throw into the RFPs from the from the operators. So basically, putting a feature parity that I mean, I have received uh, RFPs that normally are more than a thousand features that they are claiming that they need up and run to have uh, developed also. But the reality is that those functionalities are not required, they are not needed. So the, I think uh, from future parity is one of the things that the, is, is, uh, the industry is asking us to, to promote, to, to develop. Reality is that now that we have reached certain level of future parity, there are some functionalities that are not being used in the industry that is no need to develop. Reality, and actually was uh, mentioned this morning, Open Run is bringing uh, for the first time uh, benefits that traditional run cannot uh, sustain, cannot bring. And that's why maybe what the other operator, other vendors are promoting. For example, they are bringing with open run uh, uh, automation, uh, arti using artificial, artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually make the networks more efficient, more agile. Things that with traditional run, they, they cannot do. Uh, the terms of the deployment, rapid deployment, with Open Run, with a push of a button, you actually scale up. You can actually do upgrades. So right now, Open Run is doing constant developments that uh, we can do because of the type of architecture that we have there. So traditional run, you need to go to visit the sites. It's a lot of extra cost from manpower and from functionality perspective that. Uh, we are competing there. Yes, it does seem like we've gotten to a point where the interoperability and the process of achieving it has been well established and is getting more and more replicable. So you're getting more onto innovative features that Open RAN can enable. And I wanted to go back to a comment you made earlier. There's no 6G without 5G. And you know, while we're maybe not even at the midpoint of the 5G cycle, how do you see these concepts being developed now for Open RAN applying forward? Okay, as I said. Uh the new architecture is all IP, it's all traditional IT, and the operators are so needing to adopt their operational steam to actually develop the new technology, the new architectures. Uh, there is another point that is important to take in consideration is uh, typically all this is software only uh, approach where all the innovation is coming, but you cannot forget the last piece of the equation, which is the radius, which is hardware. For the radius, that's another major challenge is that we need to get volume in the industry to actually make it happen. So with a recent announcement, for example, of having incumbents opening up these inter interfaces, now any industry, any developer can develop software for open interfaces, for any radio, uh, regardless of who uh, uh, provided. So in our case, we have actually been filling the gaps. I mean, 
uh, sometimes we come, uh, operators compare us with traditional uh, vendor because we are actually doing not only the software piece but also the hardware piece and also the integration. So we are doing end to end for the operator because they are demanding that. But I think the true ecosystem in open running, in open architecture is where everybody contributes with the state of the art technology there. So right now we can fill the gap in everything, but it's, it's good when the customer asks us to use our software in competitors' hardware, because at the end that's the whole purpose of opening the, 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 the structure. So moving into 5G to 6G, you know that 5G can, uh, needs a lot of investment. I mean, to achieve what 5GSA actually brings in technology, that that you need low latency, that you have better coverage, that you use millimeter waves, for example, massive magma. You need to actually do a huge investment that with traditional technology you cannot do, you cannot achieve. Uh, open run web architecture is the only way to actually make it happen. So operators are struggling, that's why they are putting a lot of pressure to reduce cost. And the way to do it is with open, open run, open architecture. So we've talked uh, about Open RAN, but maybe you can expand the aperture a little bit and give us a more general uh, update about Mavenir across the portfolio. Um, that's, uh, thank you for making that comment, because actually when I joined Mavenir uh, maybe six years ago, the beauty that uh, I have seen is actually the experience that one brought from uh, moving from the core platform side, being a leader on, on innovation and trying to do uh, from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G in uh, open an architecture using cost hardware, u using any cloud, any uh, hyperscaler, any hypervisor. That, that was important knowledge that the company had gained to actually apply that same concept into the last piece of the network that was not open, which is the run area, the access area. And that's what you are seeing here in FIOS all the time. I mean, now with uh, open transport, open access, open run, is that innovation and that knowledge, that background that Manuel has, now we are applying that, moving in from 4G to 5G, and, and that's why we are being successful. We recently announced that we actually had uh, some uh, good success in the market, uh, also in Europe and also in Latin America, uh, in the core side, for example, where we applied same concept, open solution, using different clouds uh, providers, different hyperscalers, uh, uh, that's what we are doing today. And then last question, Antonio. I, I know you've got a busy week. We're going to meet with customers, prospective customers, and otherwise talk with some of your colleagues in the industry while we're at the show here. What's your primary message to them going to be, and what are you hoping to learn from them? Uh, my message will be, do it now. Just do it. Uh, I was visiting perhaps the largest customer that we had in the US for Open Run, which is Dish. And I learned from them, they embraced this technology a few years back, even knowing that the technology was not ready at that time. But they actually mentioned, uh, that was a, a message shared with them, that they shared actually to us, to, uh, to some of the visitors they were having, that if they had not embraced this technology at that time, they would not have a possibility to compete today with incumbent operators, AT&T, Verizon, I mean, and using, using traditional, uh, traditional vendors, they will end up with a traditional network. So they actually uh, were very uh, eager to actually promote and take ownership on a technology. Actually, in that case, they are actually serving as an integrator of different vendors, but they see the benefit nowadays. They actually doing really well, uh, prepared to competition with a technology, with a network that is very flexible based on, on the future, not based on legacy. So that will be a message to to the CTOs that have not taken the decision yet. I find in my region some CTOs that are very uh, fast forward thinkers and they just uh, embrace the, the challenges of introducing new technology because it's not just challenging of being a new vendor, it's challenges of actually uh, preparing their own operational team to actually uh, use the openness of the new architecture. I have some CTOs that are more uh, based on traditional architecture, they don't want to innovate. They, they believe that they cannot uh, do the step without relying on uh, incumbent vendors. So they are a little bit afraid of actually doing the transition because they, they rely so much on the incumbent vendor. But I would say do it because the benefits is the only way to actually succeed, to, to grow in the future.
Excellent. Well, Antonio, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with me and with our audience. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.